Hey guys, I am here at my home TV watching some of the very first videos I used to watch when I was learning to Skagit cast or spay cast. And the reason I say that is because the title is Mike Kinney spay casting Skagit lines. There's the touch and go right there. Okay, that's a spay cast. It's a touch and go spay cast. He's gonna switch over and do a waterborne anchor. Right here, he slaps the water, peels the line across and casts. That also is a spay cast, but it could be confused with a Skagit cast because it's with a Skagit line. Here's another guy I used to watch, Ed Ward. I still enjoy watching Ed Ward. Hey, Ed Ward is a Skagit caster. He might be the Skagit caster. I used to watch tons of Ed Ward. I got this video, Skagit Master One. And what didn't really occur to me for quite a while was that you can spay cast Skagit lines, but Skagit casting Skagit lines is a different style. Okay, you can spay cast a Skagit line, but Skagit casting is a little different because of Ed Ward, who I consider to be a master spay caster. Ed uses an out and around, over the top, continuous motion, sustained anchor or waterborne cast with heavy sink tips and heavy flies like the intruder. It sounds way more complicated than it actually is. I do believe it's just a little bit different than regular spay casting, but many contend that it's not. It also works well with lighter tips and lighter flies for floating work in the summer. Whatever the case, it's highly effective, and if you choose this style, I recommend you stay with it. Notice the high sweep. Boom. While Mike Kinney would do a touch and go cast, usually he'd lift up here and then he'd sweep around and then he'd come up a little bit and then he'd cast something like that. That's the idea. So I didn't recognize the differences. So I'd go out to Skagit cast, I thought, with my Skagit line and my sink tip and my intruder, <laughs> or maybe my green butt, butt skunk sweep around and then do a great big lift right here, which is called a drift. Only I had my arms all weird and stuff. And you can do that. You can spay cast Skagit lines with a sweep, a drift up, or a circle up, and a cast, but that's not Edward Skagit casting. If you sweep with your rod tip going up and then lift up again, it'll keep your V-loop off the water back here. But if you do an Ed Ward cast and you sweep and keep everything below your shoulder level, then you do a continuous motion cast out, around, and over the top in one smooth continuous motion. So those are the differences. Okay, fast forward, Klaus Frimmer. He does what? Underhand casting, which is different even yet. See that right there? Doink, underhand casting. He might call that uh, Scandy, but he's an underhand casting guy, which is different yet. And this is yet another one of my favorite ones. This is Aaron Goodis videoing Tim Arsenault actually fishing with long belly spay lines. The uh, photography is awesome. The casting is spay casting long belly lines. You can spay cast Skagit lines, but you can't necessarily Skagit cast spay lines because there's a difference in the styles. That is what I try to accomplish by doing my videos. I try to, that's a sweet cast. I try to differentiate between. 
differentiate. Skagit, or let me put it this way, Skagit, Scandi, Underhand, and Spay Casting. The snake roll spay cast, shown here by Tim Arsenault, requires a much longer stroke with a long belly line. What are the factors in choosing a style? The length of line being cast, the distance of the cast, the weight and size of the payload, tradition, personal preference, love or hate of stripping and line control, popularity, for instance, Skagit is very popular in my neck of the woods for heavy payloads, but it is not necessarily the only option. So for an underhand, it's a very little compact stroke. This rod starts on my body. You lift till your arm is at this level. You sweep till the rod passes your face, at which point you continue to sweep and you do a little half circle with your bottom hand, lift up and then pull in with your bottom hand and not too far forward with your top hand, okay? If I have a 70 foot shooting head and a 13 and a half foot rod, say this is not gonna cut it. For Scandi and underhand, I like to hug the rod, rock my body a little bit, sweep with my bottom hand, and then use my bottom hand in the forward cast. For Skagit, I like to keep my hands in front of me, keep my body still, and use just my hands and forearms as much as possible. But for casting long belly spay lines, I like to push my hands away from my body and push out with the lower hand to begin with and while my hands stay still I like to rotate my body and then circle up high and cast the forward cast as long as I can I If I'm just fishing, say, and I got something awkward to cast, like a Skagit head with a sink tip, and I want a touch-and-go cast, <laughs> I'm, I'll do a little underhand, but it's easier for me to start with the rod here at the side. Now we're going to get into modern Scandinavian casting, much of which I learned from the very fine European caster, Janusz Penitz, who has been a great help to my casting. Lift, push out, sweep around, or usually give it that shot. Okay. Modern Scandinavian casting is a very versatile kind of casting that incorporates all of the spay casts, airborne and waterborne, with the stipulation that strong bottom hand power is required for the forward cast. But if you want to familiarize yourself with the different styles. I do have some Scandinavian casting videos, some underhand casting videos, some spay casting videos, and some Skagit casting videos. There's enough information on them that if you will practice those styles, then you can get proficient at them. I just, just understand the differences in all of them, figure out what you like and stick with that one style for that one style of fishing or length of line. <laughs>